Hello everyone and welcome to this episode of the Talking Dabu podcast. Whoever who knows me personally knows how excited I was to have this guest on my show and to have had the conversation that I have had in this episode. So my guest for today is Zachary Drucker who is an Emmy nominated transgender woman from Los Angeles, California and she is an LGBT actress, she is an activist, she is a producer and she was nominated to the Emmys for her docu series called This Is Me which is on Amazon Prime and explores the stories of transgender people and the struggles that they have to face in their day-to-day lives. In this episode we also talk about her role as a consultant producer on the first ever hit show on Amazon Prime which goes by the title Transparent and explores the story of a transgender woman named Mora in her late 60s who is coming to terms with her sexuality and coming out to her family at that age which is quite phenomenal. Um so in this episode we talk to Zachary about what art means to her and how has that been a cathartic experience to have produced and written such characters that she wasn't seeing around her and how has it been for her to provide this multidimensional queer lens to art and democratize it in in true sense uh thank you so much for tuning in and i'm really excited to have had this conversation Mm. Hi Zachary, thank you so much for joining me uh for my podcast today. It's really amazing to uh have you and I cannot describe it in words. I am I'm super psyched to have this conversation with you, you today and your work the the art that you put out means so much to me. I'm sure uh it strikes a chord with a lot of my listeners too. So thank you so very much. I'm looking forward to this. Thank you so much for having me. It's really my pleasure to be here. It's 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 really my pleasure and I and I mean it with all my heart and soul. But uh moving on, um I I just want to like before I start want to you know appreciate how much I really really admire the work that you put out and this is especially in context of Transparent which is the first hit show on Amazon Prime and you were producing the show along with a lot of other people and when i watched that show last month it it just meant so much to me because you know that show allows to you, you to just exist and it, it's such a unique sort of show which allows you the freedom to be and explore and you know to question and re-question and come to identify who you really really are and to me that's just wonderful and then phenomenal in you know um coming to conclusions about who i am really and just like questioning myself a lot of the time so thank you thank you thank you so much for putting out such work it really oh, that's so special i love hearing that um i think that filmmaking is a magical form in so many ways and the fact that you discovered it last month and we made it years ago is a testament to the kind of you know the way that art can change people through time and all over the world. Yeah, like absolutely it, it's pretty timeless. Like whenever you watch it, it it's just there and it, it's pure and that's the beauty of it really. Um and we would come later on what art means to you and what has this journey of exploring through art um sure. providing a trans gaze to it has been like. But for whoever's listening in the audience who doesn't know what does it mean to be a transgender. Um I would just like to you know put out that LGBTQ community is uh composed of L for lesbian, G for gay, B for bisexual and T for transgender. So while a lot of people may know the meanings that the first three initials connote. Um uh, would you like to touch a bit on what it means to be a transgender and and what are we really saying when we say that someone is a transgender and how how has your experience been like in you know self acceptance and just discovering that you belong to a part of this community absolutely i mean so transgender is a way of describing a person who feels um out of step with their assigned sex at birth and it literally means to um tra- you know travel from <laughs> one gender to another um 
so in my case, I was assigned male at birth and I identify as a woman. I live my life as a woman. Therefore, I am transgender. <laughs> I was, um, you know, on a journey always of understanding myself and, and my gender in relation to the world. Um, like many trans people, it took many years to get there and to carve a place out in the world for myself. Um, I transitioned at the end of the George W. Bush era, so many years ago. Um, many, you know, chapters in American history ago, and it, it feels, you know, like it was very much a different time back then. Um, the visibility that we've experienced in, in our community, I think, has been uh, you know, very helpful in some ways and, and very difficult in other ways. Um, trans people, I think, are more visible than they've ever been. And our community has survived by being invisible, largely, in previous generations, decades, centuries. Um, you know, trans people have had to kind of assimilate into society to be unseen or held their feelings inside for their lifetimes. And both of those are tantamount to invisibility. And then I think, you know, we're trying to create a new paradigm for, for society, for, for everybody having a gendered experience of the world. And in my view, it's crucial to dismantling sexism and misogyny. Yeah, no, definitely. Um, and thank you for that simplistic explanation of what it means to be a, a trans person. And, you know, just talking, uh, even you talked about visibility, it just made me think and, you know, like in my head, how the community has survived and how the oppression and the marginalization has survived seems to be through this, you know, self-reinstating invisibility that we as a society have sort of allowed to perpetrate for so long. So I think I think that is why work like you, like you put out is important. You were talking about visibility. So that's something that came to my mind. But, you know, just circling back to what we were talking about earlier, um, you know, the kind of um, importance art held for you. You you went to uh, the best art schools in the world. You went to SBA in New York and CalArts as well. Um, and you, you are a photographer yourself. You are an amazing artist. You're a producer. You are a writer. And you, that, that's how I like to put your work to my friends. I say that she talks about art in an almost romantic manner. Because <laughs> that's what I felt, you know, like every video of you, every interview of you that I have ever watched, it seemed like, you know, you enjoy this relationship with art that you have mutually given, um, you know, each other something to add and, and something of value. So I, I am really curious to ask you, what has this relationship with art been like in terms of, you know, yourself, your, your internal exploration, because art is something external, but, but how did it allow you to, you know, connect those dots internally and, you know, find that sort of peace and catharsis uh, inside of yourself? Thank you so much for that question. Um, <clears throat> and excuse my voice, I'm having a little bit of a, I think a lingering cold in my chest. Um, and apologies you know, art, to me to just for, for scheduling a very early morning conversation. You're you. perfect. Oh my God. It's, I'm so uh, clear this early in the morning. <laughs> and, you know, to answer your question, I think that art, has always provided a space for me to see myself and to construct myself. I often tell this story about being a child, being three or four years old and dressing up in my mother's old um, prom dresses and dance costumes. And I would have one of my parents photograph me and I had a collection of photographs of me in 
dresses, you know, me as a little girl. And so I consider that in many ways my first art project. Um, and I think it provided a, an escape, a kind of um, way to understand myself outside of the constraints of the world that I was in, um, a world that necessitated that I perform as a boy. So I, you know, discovered art making as a place to exist outside of our physical reality. <laughs> and another piece of it is storytelling, which I think is the great vehicle for empathy. I think that um, storytelling is the best way to um, understand people who are different from you. And in a time when trans rights have become in the States very much a kind of central element in the culture wars that we're experiencing. Um, you know, trans rights are really under attack and have been kind of out on the public stage in a way that they were not a, a decade ago. Um, so it's very much a, a kind of time for everybody to do work around <laughs> telling trans stories and familiarizing people who have not been um, educated on our existence um, in, 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 in life. Uh, and I think there's a lot of work to do. I think it's going to take all of us doing this work simultaneously for the rest of our lives in order to push it forward. But that we're standing on the shoulders of so many people who have lived and died for us to be here. Um, I am, you know, so empowered by knowing the stories of my predecessors, of being in dialogue with predecessors and elders and people who have survived less accepting and less tolerant times. And that's truly, I think, what propels and sustains the work that I've done is being um, in the flow of time, being inspired by um, the many people who got me here. Yeah, absolutely. And I, and I, and I so understand that sentiment because, you know, when I was watching your docu-series, This Is Me, um, mm -hmm. there, there's this part about generations and, yeah. you know, you have very beautifully captured a, 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 an elderly trans woman, uh, relatively elderly trans woman talking to a younger trans woman. And, you know, she, she said things like, you know, you are the evolution of me and, and looking at you and looking at your story just tells me that it was worth struggling for what, what we struggled for. So it, it's really a full circle sort of thing. And, and I'm sure um, it's been quite cathartic for you to, to write those stories. Um, and, and, and this is a theme that I, that I saw even in Transparent, you know, Transparent as a show in and of itself is built around like stories of families across generations and like it, it sort of tracks not only Mora, Mo, Mora, but but also like her kids and like their predecessors and like this entire family lineage. So so it's really I, I guess creating some like some legacies which which sort of gender which are gender non-conforming. And, and I'm sure you know in that sense it it's 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 really I, I think that's why you talk about art as being you know your political responsibility rather than just you know, something that you do as an artist. But, you know, I'm, I'm interested in, in knowing that does it ever feel that you are a part of something bigger when you are putting this work out there, when you, for instance, uh, produced this, this episode on generations and, and these trans women were talking to each other. What did it mean for you to, to experience and to like put that work out? Like, 
it is it does it does it mean that you're you're part of something bigger that what you're doing is not just limited to you whatever your experiences are not just your experiences but they are having an impact as we speak and probably yeah. that is something that is you know it kindled this fire inside me and le- allowed us to talk today and connect from like different parts of of the world um so so do you do you feel that that you're doing something that that that's outside of you that's beyond you Absolutely. <laughs> um <clears throat> I love your question so much and I do feel that way. I mean, I think that we are all connected. I think that I really believe in the collective unconscious, the idea that all humans are a, are a kind of force of God. Um and that <clears throat> we are just kind of microcosms and messengers. for something that is much bigger than us i felt very acutely in my work as an artist that in sharing my own very subjective story my own very personal experience that it is a universal experience and that the more specific you are the more universal it is um that if you can be very specific <laughs> about um something it becomes relatable to people who might have different experiences but who relate to the broad strokes that you're conveying so the way that that i think translates in you know stories of gender expansive people through time i think that everybody has an experience of gender that is expansive um every one of us yet for cisgender men in particular it's such a limited um scope of experience i mean there's like you know two emotions that you are um supported to project and it's like you know anger <laughs> basically like anger rage and like you know happiness um you know so i think that like mis- you know misogyny and sexism keep everybody in these roles that um they're not encouraged to supersede or um move past and that trans people have an experience that's um totally unique you know experiencing the world from multiple positions um and being able to relate to everybody because of that um i feel really blessed by my trans experience and you know to the other part of your question about being a part of something bigger i have survived because of the elders in my life kind of showing me the survival strategies and the incredible s- scope of of resilience of people surviving despite all odds and managing to have a measurable impact on the world i mean i really believe that we as individuals can shape reality can shape history and that um we're here for a reason and only for a very short amount of time um our lives are a part of an interconnected web and the work that we do is is not truly for us as individuals so much as um for us as humanity uh that that's such a wonderful part and yeah like Wow, it it's moved me really. Um, yeah, I mean, I I definitely get and and I find it wonderful the way you put it that you know trans people have different kinds of experiences and I I think this is why you know this uniqueness must be portrayed and should be spilled into art. And I remember that that with um you, that some years ago I think you you came out with the, with a photo album called Relationship. Yeah. Which was really <clears throat> Uh, some snaps 
Oh, oh wow, okay. <laughs> I'm a <laughs> behind me. So, so it it really snaps off your day to day life, right? Like it it's, yeah. it's about your like how you perceive the world and what you would be doing in your day to day life. And I'm interested in knowing what what was the sort of driving force behind you know coming out with this in public because I'm sure it's a, it's a very personal thing and must have been. a thought out decision to release it in such a beautiful manner for everyone to peruse so i wanted to hear from you what was really you know the driving force behind you taking the decision to release it and and for whoever in the audience who doesn't know what this album is you could touch upon it and you know what all it contains absolutely so you know in 2008 i met um a trans man named Reese Earns so like me but opposite um and we were in a relationship for many years and very much in love and we transitioned side by side in many ways um and documented our life together um and the and really they were just private documents um of you know in any kind of diaristic tradition of us just photographing each other photographing ourselves in the house that we lived in in Silver Lake and here in Los Angeles and you know over the 6 years that we were together we captured um a range of you know the the full range of what two people in a relationship experience and I'm so grateful for that um relationship and ultimately for the work that we created the photographs that we created um they were private until 2014 when we decided to feature them as artworks in the Whitney Biennial and it was a confluence of things that catalyzed us to put it out there i mean i think that as a couple who you know is two trans people in love and in a relationship together we didn't know if there was any precedent for that because we had never seen images or film or television shows about two trans people being together and we wondered for example like what is that called so, you know like what is it called you know is it it's not a gay relationship it's not a straight relationship <laughs> it's like is it you know it, i mean there's just there was no language really to define our pairing and there were no representations of it and after many years once we had amassed an archive of you know the story of our of our life together um i think we felt a kind of moral responsibility to create something in the culture to put something out there that we didn't have as a road map and the images are beautiful i think that they really get to the heart of of love and what it means to create a world with another person um and therefore it is universal to anybody who's experienced love and um it really reached many people that series it was shown in galleries and museums around the world um we published a book called relationship um which is you know the the photographs from our life together and um in hindsight you know i'm very thankful that the world embraced that work and that we had the courage to put it out there yeah and and we are thankful as well to to put such work out there and 
yeah i mean it it really strikes the chord when you when you say that you know that that there there is invisibility through and through that there is no language but to put to these emotions of what you were experiencing and i think i i think this is why it, it, it's so valuable for for us to put such work out there and to have that you know queer gaze to have that trans gaze to have that insight into the work and the art that we create so that you know the queer community is not just subject of the stories that are out there but they are writing them they are producing them and i think i think that's why that that's what makes all the difference and in this context i would also you know like to ask about transparent which is now my new favorite show and i can't <laughs> stop talking about it but uh-huh. but i i i really I, like i read i keep reading up trivia about the show like what is going on behind the lens and what is like what actor is up to what and like what writer is up to what i was wondering like uh, what what are the kind of you know struggles that you had i know a lot of trans people was were taken on and off lens uh, to, to, to get this show out because you know yeah. uh, uh jill thorave wanted a very authentic sort of representation of the trans community and which is what you talked about there's so much invisibility that no one really knows what 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 goes on so for you to be on the show what was that like to be on the show and you know what what are the kind of struggles and the challenges that you faced in 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 a world that is so obsessed with like fitting in and you were creating a show which is about exploring a show about giving space show about just not giving a shit about the kind of stories that we have been told wow absolutely i mean making transparent was such a learning experience for me just having um a huge cast and crew um it was a really epic undertaking in many ways i mean um and we created the show from we started we filmed the pilot in 2013 and we filmed the finale in 2019 um so it was about 6 years of my life so it's kind of it's hard to summarize or encapsulate <laughs> the kind of i mean it was a full opera truly um the story behind the scenes i mean there was you know an epic rise and an epic fall and so many relationships and worlds created within the microcosm of our show um i mean the show became a huge hit after the first season and all of the excitement winning awards um the accolades that the show received was really unprecedented as we were kind of first creating it we didn't anticipate that it would have such a, a measurable impact and i think that uh, you know one of my greatest accomplishments along with Reese Earns too was in the relationship series of work so he and i as a team kind of um produced transparent and ultimately our relationship um you know transitioned into a working relationship and being colleagues um but and that happened over the course of of making transparent <laughs> so it was truly like you know um a place in my life that was stable and ever evolving um but in which many of my you know personal and close relationships friendships um had a had a had a space to to grow and uh, you know i was going to say i think the reason i think our greatest accomplishment on transparent was really creating opportunities for other gender non-conforming people both in front of and behind the lens and that we had a very um inclusive crew you know that we created opportunities for folks who had not kind of gotten their foot in the industry 
And after having lived in Los Angeles for so many years and being a part of the LGBTQ filmmaking scene, um, and, you know, Transparent was really our first opportunity to participate in something that was a much bigger, much more mainstream endeavor. So, you know, we, we have all the gratitude in the world for Joey Soloway bringing us on board and making us a part of the creative nucleus of the show. And it certainly has gotten me to where I am today, continuing to create culture. Well, uh, yeah, and uh, it's so true that representation does beget representation. So once you have started this, that there's only, you know, sky's the limit. And there's more and more, more and more artists are going to come out. And since the Definitely. show is also perceived really well, it's done really well in a very heteronormative world, I'm sure that, that this gives, you know, that impetus to like something much bigger. And I, and I read about the show, something you were talking about earlier, of how trans people were trained in writing and in acting and directing. So, yeah, I'm sure like it, it's a part of something much bigger. But what really after after Transparent came out, your docuseries, This Is Me also came out. Yeah. Which, which, which had its subtitle as Be Transparent. You know, I, I'm, yeah, it, yeah. It, 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 it's curious <laughs> what, what really inspired the title This Is Me and also, you know, for you to make that series what was what was the inspiration behind it and how has it been like for you to be a part of that oh i love your question so much <laughs> this is me is what mora says at the end of the first episode of transparent so in the pilot she is you know we see her in her family life and we see her as a fledgling trans person in a group therapy context. Oh yeah, right? yeah, I remember that. Oh, now, now it makes a lot of sense. Yeah, and at the very end of the episode, um, Mora is coming home dressed as a woman after having gone to the LGBT center, and she walks into her house, and one of her eldest daughter is there and she's been discovered basically dressing as a woman and she sits the daughter down and she says, you know, my whole life I've been dressing up as a man, but this is me. This is who I really am. She says, this is me. So that's the kind of the title of the docuseries. And ultimately um, in Hollywood there is this period of time that's called the FYC. It's for your consideration. And what it means is that in the lead up to the award season for the Emmys and the Oscars, they start to kind of advertise and roll out um, an FYC campaign, right? So Amazon had given us a budget or had allocated, you know, part of the FYC budget to basically we convinced them to use that money to create a, a small docu series um, for and by the community, and it was at a time I think very early in Amazon's life as a studio, and they were totally open to us. Um, running with it to, to really kind of like creating something um, that could be a more tangible return and offering and a kind of supplement in a way to the show itself of Transparent, which is a narrative and, you know, it's a, it's a story that takes many twists and turns and it's hilarious and it's so many things. Um, but we wanted to really feature some of the characters who were on the kind of edge of the story in a way 
of you know in the way in, in transparent. I mean, it's really centered around a patriarch um, of transgender woman who finds uh, her identity as a woman late in life. I mean, she's in her 60s or late 60s, I guess, at the beginning of the show. And um, there's just a huge spectrum of, of experience that is not encapsulated in the story, in the show, in the, in the story of Transparent. So this is me, it was kind of an opportunity to grow that and expand it and to feature um, real life trans people. Yeah, and, and it so beautifully supplements it because it's, it's a very realistic rendering of, you know, real life stories of people who are not at all connected, but yet are so beautifully connected. Because I remember the first episode, I think it's about a South Indian trans woman talking to a Sri Lankan yeah. trans man. They yes. are different. <laughs> their identities are different. They are from different backgrounds. Their, their countries are different. And yet one thing brings them together is their oppression and, and their experiences of unacceptance. So, so yeah, I mean, beautiful, beautiful. Yeah. It really supplements it very, very neatly. And I remember a lot of the episodes are inspired from things that happen in Transparent, such as yeah. the, such as the incident of, you know, the, the toilet incident, um, the, the whole washroom sort of debate and, and the frisking at airports and things. Yes, like that. yes. So, yeah, so, definitely. So it's amazing. Um, but I remember you talking about in, in your epi- the, the, the last episode of the series, which features you talking about, um, you know, how, how it, what it means for trans people to be possible. And for the benefit of our audience, it means that for trans people to, you know, pass as quote unquote, um, cis het people um, uh, in, in the world. And, and they are unclockable in the sense that they are not recognizable. And you were talking about the importance of community and, you know, like, what does it mean to, you know, on a subway run into a trans person and just go to them and to talk about your experiences. So it, that was, that was, that really struck a chord with me because a lot of the stigma that we have developed around the society, the people who are passable, people who are unclockable really do feel like it's not their response or probably not just responsibility, but it's so it's comfortable to be in their own lane and to not associate with the, the, the group that causes stigma, right? And, yeah. and in that context, that also leads me to think that the LGBT community itself, like the trans community and the bisexual community itself became a part much later of this entire sort of group, right? Because, um, you know, we, we only knew about lesbians and gays and they didn't, they weren't accepting trans struggles as their own so what, what do you make of it if within the community what do you make of the lack of representation what do you make of queer friendships and collaboration and you know just connection based on your experiences regardless of your diversity what, what do you make mm-hmm. of that um i think that it's so crucial that we tell our stories that we reveal who we are, that we are vulnerable with each other um, and sharing our differences. I think that there is strength in the differences between us and um, comfort where we overlap. Um, I, I think that um, it will really kind of take many generations to push this forward and to create a different uh, paradigm for for gender and for equality. And that that's what we're moving towards and that we're in this very kind of almost combustible time. Like it's not, it doesn't feel particularly easy in this moment as um, the rights of, of trans people and in America, the, the access to healthcare for um, children, 
pri primarily and their participation in school sports. That's kind of where the conversation has landed in the States as, as a kind of battleground. Um, ultimately, it is a byproduct of you know, more representation of people feeling threatened by a modernizing world. I think that trans people represent a modernizing world in many ways. And that that has always been a cause of cultural conflict. And it's the newest version of that in our generation, but it's something that has plagued humanity forever. Um, you know, the people who are open and able to flow into the future and the people who um, are indignant and would rather return to the past. Um, I think that kind of encapsulates the polarization of America right now. And um, I don't know, can you relate to that in India? Oh yeah, well? we, are con we, we are still connected by our differences. <laughs> So yeah, yeah, we can relate absolutely. That's the same case here. Yeah. And where do you feel like trans representation is in India? Is that a bad place? Um, I I feel that I mean I I am not trans. Um, so like take what I say with a pinch of salt because I don't have those real life, you know, yeah. just struggles of being existing. But I think the representation is terrible and. Um, I feel we, we need to do a lot of unlearning and learning because like the beliefs we hold are clearly unscientific and we've just, yeah. we, we don't know a lot of terms. A lot of the people I'm around also don't know a lot of terms. So I think first step is to educate ourselves and for that to represent them more to be just visible for people to, you know, have that drive to learn about them. And I think, yeah. That's where you plug it. Absolutely. If you were uh, just to end this, um, and I'm, I'm forever so grateful for you to come to my podcast, but just before ending it, if you were to, you know, for anyone who has trans people around them or anyone who has gender non-conforming people or, you know, just generally has someone in their family or are themselves dealing with this, what do you say to them? Uh, how, how, how do they deal with it? I would say that you are not alone, that you are um, surrounded by a legacy of survival and perseverance, and that life is a survival game, that we're here to exist for as long as we possibly can. And that's the sort of um, objective for being here is to recognize and to believe in our value as individuals in order to um, create change and to be agents of change in the world. Um, it's not easy. It is hard one <laughs> to survive life knowing that nobody makes it out alive and um, that we are all here with um, work to do, you know, that we all are um, on our own path and there will be helpers along the way. There will be people who will lead you to yourself, your, your greater self. And everybody you encounter is a teacher. There is something to learn in every micro interaction, in every um, person that you meet, and that it's limitless and infinite, infinitely possible. Um, that even in your moments of loneliness and defeat, 
that the possibility to find magic is always right around the corner and the sun rises every morning um, with or without us so maybe may as well be with us <laughs> you know that we are really implored to hang in there and to find each other and to seek connection and to create love and art i think those are the two um noblest pursuits of, of being a human is creating love and creating art wow absolutely so beautifully put it that there's nothing i can add to this to like make it better so i would just leave it at that thank you so much zachary and thank you to whoever tuned into this episode um, thank you so I, much <laughs> i'm forever grateful for your work and i'm forever grateful for you to ex have accepted my invitation to appear uh, on this show thank you so much no are you kidding it was my pleasure to connect with you and thank you so much for your questions and for being interested and for creating this dialogue and is truly an honor and um it is the things that i'm talking about it is alchemy and magic to create connection from across the world mm -hmm.